John on this channel. We talk all things physical media, so movies, music, and books. If you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and subscribe down below for more of that kind of content. So this is a different video. Uh, I try to do some lists every once in a while, and a friend of mine, Tim from Tim Talks Talkies, he sent me a film, actually two made this list, um, he sent me a film that gave me the idea to do this video. And it was a film that had to do with a minister, a person in the clergy. And I when I finished watching the film, and I loved the film, it got me thinking, I was like, I think I actually have a couple of films that star priests or clergy or a pastor or preacher. I think I have a couple. And then I went through my collection. And I found out I actually have quite a few. And so anyway, I thought, you know what? It might be kind of a cool video to show what films I have that feature uh, clergy, priest, pastors, clergy. And um, anyway, let me know in the comments below if you have some other recommendations that you would make of films that star uh, clergy or pastors or priests. And uh, yeah, let me know what ones that I should consider adding to my collection. But these are the ones I have in my collection. So here we go. Okay, so the first two are going to be honorable mentions, and um, uh, because they, I, I don't feel like they perfectly fit with the others. Uh, the first one, uh, it, it doesn't. So I am, um, uh, when it comes to a priest, I had to actually look this up. I didn't know if uh, nuns were considered clergy or not. I'm not a Catholic. I've never been to mass. Never met a priest. In fact. Um, so I had to check, and apparently nuns are not considered clergy because they're not ordained. But this is a great film that features nuns that I highly recommend if you've never seen it, from 1963, starring Sidney Poitier, and it is Lilies of the Field. It's a really, really great film that stars a group of nuns who are super funny, and they're so fantastic, and the relationship with Sidney Poitier in the film is just outstanding and a lot of fun to watch. So um, if you've never seen this one, check it out, um, but I can't technically add it to the list because they're not clergy, but I thought I would mention them. And then the other one is, um, it's more of a biopic. So these the other ones are fictional stories. So this one was kind of different, but it is uh, Selma. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was a Baptist minister and um, a preacher. So he technically is in here, but this is a biopic. So it's, it's different than the other ones. So I thought I would give this one an honorable mention. Obviously what he, um, as a minister, what he did uh, when it comes to social justice, and human rights was very much driven, especially his nonviolent stances, um, was driven by his faith, and uh, which was a huge part of his life. But anyway, so I thought I would mention this one as another honorable mention, um, but didn't add it to the other uh, to the other list. So anyway, friends, this is my actual list. Okay, so the first two I'll mention, uh, one of them I am partway through, and most of these I've seen. Uh, there's a couple here that I'm either partway through or I just are uh, on the verge of watching. Uh, these are two films that actually kind of go together. Uh, this first one is from 1944. The next one is from 1945. Uh, this first one, it stars Bing Crosby. It's called Going My Way. And he is a, um, I just started this one. He is a priest and... Uh, with Bing Crosby, I mean, you're going to get great music. Um, he's just smooth and cool. So I've just started this one, and I'm enjoying this one so far, um, but I haven't watched it, so I can't give you much of a rundown on this one. But he is a priest in this film, and then he is also in this one. This is kind of a follow-up, and this is The Bells of St. Mary's, uh, also starring Ingrid Bergman. And again, this one is from 1940. Five, and uh, this is uh, yeah again a follow up to this next one, and he is a priest, and his name is Father O'Malley. So, going my way, and Bells of Saint Mary's are the first two films that I have in this uh, collection of uh, films starring priests or clergy. Uh, the next one is again two films I have started this one, and I'll confess to you, no pun intended. Um, this was a bit slow. I'm just starting this one. It's a bit slow so far. But this one uh, is from 19... 38 and 1941, two different films, and they star Spencer Tracy and Mickey Rooney, and it is Boys Town and Men of Boys Town. So I just started these one. He is a uh, priest who is looking to help people, uh, especially young people who are on the streets, who are homeless, struggling no place to live, they're stealing, they're getting into trouble, and he wants to help them out and get them out of trouble. So anyway, I've just begun this, this collection of films, so I can't give you a huge rundown, but that's the gist of it. So anyway, this is the next one I have, the next two I have in my collection. Uh, this next one is one that my friend Tim from Tim Talks Talkies, uh, go check out his channel. Great guy, great channel. He sent this my way and he's talked to me about this film many, many times. And uh, he said, I have to watch it. And I recently did. and It was outstanding. It's from 1955. It is a, um, it is a uh, Criterion film, spy number 541 and starring Robert Mitchum. And it is The Night of the Hunter. 
And I've heard many people talk of this film and talk about how terrifying it is and how excellent it is, and it, 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 is, it is all of those things. And so uh, Robert Mitchum plays a, uh, he's a killer, and he is a kind of a traveling, and he's a preacher. So I don't think he's necessarily like officially clergy, but he's a preacher. He walks around, he's praying, asking God for direction um, when he's going to go do these horrible things, um, looking for money, looking to exploit people. And it is pretty terrifying how he kind of uses his faith to justify the awful things he does. So he is a considered a traveling preacher throughout this film. So this is included in the collection as well. So anyway, The Night of the Hunter, if you haven't seen it, it's terrifying. And it, it is great. Thank you so much, Tim, for sending this my way. Uh, the next one is a ridiculous comedy. And uh, it, I wouldn't say it's a fantastic film, but it makes me laugh and I do enjoy it. And it stars one of my all-time favorite actors in Robin Williams and Mandy Moore and John Krasinski. And it is Licensed to Wed. Uh, this entire film is about these two. They're going through premarital counseling. He is the minister who's going to do the wedding and he's doing the premarital counseling. And it is just absolute uh, it's just awful what he puts them through. And it is very funny, but it's just awful awful what he puts them through and so anyway this is a light-hearted comedy really goofy comedy and uh, if you've never seen it i do think it's worth checking out whether you want it in your collection or not i don't know i love robin williams so it had to be in my collection but anyway license to wed robin williams as a priest uh, this next one is one i just watched the other day it is a hitchcock film and it is outstanding it is from 1953 and it's called i confess starring montgomery clift and ann baxter so he is a priest. Montgomery Clift is a priest. And uh, here's the gist of it. I'm not spoiling anything. It's on the back. If you watch the trailer, um, the first few minutes of the film, he is a priest who someone comes to him and confesses that they have committed a murder. As a priest, my understanding is he is not allowed to tell anyone that. No one at all. It's because he is holding on to his vows as a priest. Um, so anyway, someone has confessed a murder to him. But in the end, he ends up being the one who is suspected for this murder but he knows who did it, but he can't say anything because of his position as a priest. That someone confessed this to him, he can't say anything. He knows who did it, and he is now being looked at and considered to be the one who did it. So anyway, this was a great film. I haven't seen a lot of Hitchcock, but this was outstanding. Great, great film. Highly recommend that one. This is another one I also have seen a couple of times, actually. And it is a classic film. I love it. It's from 1938. It has some of my favorite actors of all time, starring James Cagney, Pat O'Brien, uh, The Dead End Kids, and Humphrey Bogart. And it is Angels with Dirty Faces. This actually just got a, um, a Blu-ray release not long ago. And I do need to upgrade uh, to that Blu-ray release um, because it's such a fantastic film. So uh, these two fellas here, you got Pat O'Brien and James Cagney. Uh, they were boyhood friends. And they grew up getting in a ton of trouble together. And as life went on, uh, there's a, I, I'm not going to ruin it for you. There's a great scene, something important happens, and everything ties in at the end. But he ends up living a, a rough life, a life of crime, getting in trouble. His whole life is that. And his buddy instead, um, he ends up becoming a priest. And his life is dedicated to um, it, trying to get kids on the street who are getting into trouble like they did when they were kids, uh, to get them out of the trouble that they're in, to get them on the right path, and uh, to not... Um, ruin the life that they have and uh, so there is uh, a love here between these two guys but there is a struggle between them throughout the entire film as well um, but a genuine love at the same time so I highly recommend this one it is great it's not very long it's 78 minutes um, if you uh, want a great classic film um, it's a really good film a lot of action in this one a lot of heart highly recommend this one so this ends up in the collection uh, this next one is a Scorsese film, and this one is a, it's a long watch. It's 160 minutes, and it feels like at least 160 minutes. With that said, um, it's a great film and a lot to talk about at the end of uh, watching this one. So this is a Scorsese film, again, uh, starring Andrew Garfield, Adam Driver, and Liam Neeson, and it's called Silence. Uh, it's uh, Los Angeles Times said best picture of the year. Um, anyway. These guys are priests. Uh, these two guys are, uh, they found out that this fella here, uh, he may have lost his faith. And so they go on this journey to find him, to make sure he's okay, to make sure he hasn't lost his faith. They can't believe that he's lost his faith. And so this film is done in Japan and it talks about the, um, they go through a lot of persecution and there's a lot of battle. It was illegal for them to be preaching about their faith there. And so there is a lot of struggle, a lot of like underground church kind of thing where you're doing it to try to not get caught. And 
it's a great film on talking about faith, talking about culture, and um, the performances are incredible. It is a really long film, um, but it lands in the collection because all three of these guys were playing the roles of priests. So um, anyway, it is worth checking out if you have 160 minutes and you don't mind a very slow-paced film, but it's one, again, that you uh, have a lot to talk about at the end of it. So Silence. I have two more for you. Uh, this is the one that actually uh, Tim from Tim Talks Talkies also sent this to me. Uh, this is what gave me the idea to do this um, to do this uh, video. Uh, so the film is uh, it's an A twenty four film, and it is First Reformed with Ethan Hawke, and it is uh, a great film. There is a lot to work through in this film. The ending on this film may frustrate you because it frustrated me at the end of it. Uh, it can go ten different ways. And I, I think it went this way, but at the end when I was thinking through it all, I'm like, no, it really could have gone a bunch of different ways. And I wanted to know what the director thought and the director, uh, being the genius he is, said, no, we're leaving it wide open and uh, for you to take your interpretation on it. So it's a great film. He is a, uh, a clergyman, has this small little church that is essentially, uh, they call it kind of a museum. Um, it's just, uh, it, I think maybe like seven people attend. He's gone through a lot of difficult things in his own life, and he ends up meeting a couple in his church that are going through a lot. There's this traumatic event that happens, and then he ends up doing a lot of soul searching and struggling, and uh, it all kind of builds. It's a slow burn, but it builds to this pretty dramatic uh, finish. And uh, it's outstanding. Ethan Hawke, his performance in this is brilliant. Um, I highly recommend this one. Again, a slow burn, A24 film, so it's uh, very artistic and creative. I really enjoyed this, and this is what kind of kicked off the idea of what films do I have in my collection that feature priests, clergy, pastors, and uh, this is a great one. Uh, a lot of heart in this one, a lot of social issues to talk through in this one, and then again, the ending is just a really creative one um, that, yeah, I, I recommend it. And if you have seen it, let me know in the comments below what you think the ending means because I'm so deeply conflicted on what the ending is. So anyway, this is my last film. Again, let me know, friends, uh, down below what ones that you have in your collection that feature clergy, pastors, priests, rabbis that you might recommend that I check out. Uh, this is, I don't do a lot of blind buys, but I did one at Dollar Tree because it's only a dollar. Um, back in the day, it's dollar twenty-five now. Back in the day when it was a dollar. Um, I am not a Catholic. I've never met a priest, never been to Mass, so I don't know how people in the uh, Catholic faith tradition would see this film, but uh, me personally, I thought it was outstanding and a ton of heart, ton of comedy, and a lot to think through as well. And this was a, a blind by a Dollar Tree for a dollar. This film came out in 2016, and it stars a couple of familiar names, uh, Danny Glover and John C. McGinley, and it is The Good Catholic. And this is... Um, it's a drama, but it's a romantic comedy as well. And um, I highly recommend this one. So you have this young fella, this young priest. You have the older priest who's been doing it forever. And then this priest who loves basketball, loves to smoke. He's hilarious. Um, it, you very much uh, get um, some tones of scrubs in here. And um, these three guys are doing ministry. They're working at a church together. He meets this young lady and in a confessional booth of all places. She comes to confess and they end up falling for each other. And But he has made a vow of celibacy that he's going to do this priest thing. Um, but he loves her. And so it's this back and forth, this tugging of the heart. At the same time, him questioning, what do I believe about this calling I have on my life and in my faith? But at the same time, my heart says... I want to pursue this relationship with this uh, with this young woman. So anyway, this is a really great film. I've watched it actually, I think, two or three times. And it's lighthearted, but there is a lot to think through as well. So uh, The Good Catholic, I do recommend this one. If you find it at your Dollar Tree, it'll be super cheap. But uh, do pick that one up if you do find it somewhere. Friends, that's what I have in my collection. This is a, kind of an odd video, but that film, uh, First Reform, that Tim sent my way, kind of gave me the idea. And I thought it'd be fun. I, I discovered that I have a bunch of films in my collection that feature priests, pastors. Um, I don't have any um, featuring rabbis, so let me know if you have any films featuring rabbis uh, or any other priest or pastor films. Anyway, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what films you recommend. Let me know if, what you think of these films. Friends, I hope you're doing well. If you like this video, hit like. If you want to subscribe for more of this kind of content, feel free to subscribe down below. I hope you're doing well. Please do take care of yourself, and we'll see you next time.